Morning, Bitcoiners. I hope you're doing well. I'm loving my life, except for ridiculous technology. But we're doing our best. Let me see if I'm connected. Let me see what's happening. I got to see if Rumble is on. You know the whole thing? Let's see what's up. Come on, give it to me. Give it to me. Let's see what's up. It says I'm live. I'm on. I'm on Rumble. Look, Mom. I'm on Rumble. Look, Ma. Okay, that's good. All right. Let's say hello, Ben. Good morning, team. My coffee and cigar is hot. A cigar in the morning. Lucky guy. We love those. We love those. We've done that before in our lives. We've spent enough time in Cuba to know what a good start to the day a cigar can be. John, good morning. I don't recommend it, but it's a lot of fun. Daniel, good morning, Breakup Bunch. Good morning, Daniel. I hope you had a good Christmas. Hoddle T, Washington. Morning, Breakup Bitcoiners. Morning, Hoddle T. Morning. Hope you're doing great. Robert, Robert. Good morning. We are back. We're so back. We're so back. Good morning, all. Good morning, Sean recommends. Uh, David, good morning, plebs. Every day walking with Christ. Good morning, Maxis. Welcome, Black. And God bless. God bless you every day walking with Christ. We're happy you're here. We're happy you're here. But I know what you're here for. You're here for both a confirmation that the sunrise technology encircling our planet is working A-OK. -okay, and it is. We had a sunrise here on the east coast of North America. Simultaneously, our money tech is running just fine. So we're good, guys. Let's have a coffee and talk about what's new. We've got some fun Moscow time. You know how like we like to start every morning off with the fakest news fiat can produce, right? What 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 kind of amazing fake news is fiat up to today? Well, this is our Moscow time section, right? First up, uh, this one this one's from a, a Santa Monica newspaper, the Santa Monica Mirror, and uh, this is a one just a, a one in a million headline. Uh, you know, we 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 can't get enough of these ones. It's not funny either. It's not funny. Okay. Don't laugh. When I read it, if you laugh, you're a bad person. Okay. Because I didn't laugh when I read this. It's not funny. It's not funny at all. It's not even close to funny when we're thinking about the US justice system and how amazing it is. Right. So it's not funny. Accused serial killer wins $700,000 settlement with Santa Monica. The suspect was behind the killing of three homeless men. Um, but they uh, claim negligence when the city uh, officer ran uh, him while laying on the beach. Yeah, so he was lying on the beach after he committed his serial murders. And, uh, you know, they weren't really very polite to him when they arrested him. So 700 grand, you know, 700 grand. Good for him. Good for that serial killer. He's doing great. Um, this one's good too. You know, we had warm weather in America for the holidays right now. In previous years, it was cold and Trump pointed that out once and they said, oh God, you asshole has nothing to do. Don't you understand Trump that weather doesn't have anything to do with climate? God, that's what they all said, right? There's a million headlines out there. What an idiot he was. But it was warm, so things changed a little, okay? So when it's cold and you use that as evidence that something isn't happening, right, then that doesn't work, right? Then you're an idiot. But if it's warm and it fits your narrative, then there's a way to massage it into the truth, which is what was done here. This comes from Talk TV, ready? Talk TV. There are five times more extreme weather events than there used to be. Meteorolog meteorologist Jim Dale says that climate change gives extreme. So here's what you got to know, guys. Climate change gives extreme weather conditions extra venom. It's venom. That gives them extra venom, okay? So a meteorologist, he, he's just using euphemisms from snakes for fun, right? It helps, him, it helps him explain what he's talking about, right? So it's extra venom now, right? So it's extra venom. You got to know that. Um, you know, uh, Elon Musk, right? You know, so what a loser, right? What a failure, What's up, what's up with that guy, right? What a failure. Rolling Stone, right? Just failure upon failure, uh, they're, they're noticing, right? Rolling Stone, the awesome magazine that talks about rock and roll, right? The awesome magazine, right? Changing the world, Rolling Stone, uh, you know, really know about the growing list of Elon Musk's failed ideas. So this is what happened. 
you know, Hyperloop, he built, you know, the train thing with the tunnels and the boring company and they would make a train. It would be underground. It'd be so fast. It'd be like an hour across the continent, you know? Well, it didn't work out. Okay. So Hyperloop, Elon Musk's pipe dream bites the dust, right? So the pipe dream bites the dust. The futuristic transportation startup is shutting down, adding another blow to the billionaire's growing list of failed ideas, right? What would we do without this journalism of the Rolling Stone, right? What a great, what a great publication. They get everything right. You know, they're just so good. And they just, they, they line it all up. And now we can see, you know, thanks to the Rolling Stone, what a failure, what a complete and total loser Elon Musk is. Now, you know, rockets landing, stupid, right? Dumb. Who cares? Uh, electric cars, who cares? The Cybertruck, stupid. The robots, dumb, right? All that Bitcoin on the balance sheet of Tesla, retarded, right? What a dumb guy. But, you know, Rolling. thank God we have Rolling Stone to point out the list of failures. <clears throat> Uh-oh. I just lost all the messages. What happened? Literally every message is gone. Literally everyone. Are you all still there? Are you all still there? I lost all the comments. Because if someone can comment, that would be great. But I believe I've... Something's up. Nothing worked this morning, by the way, team. Like, everything's breaking. I don't understand why. I can't see any comments from YouTube. Um, how can I handle this? Private chat. Let me just look on Rumble. See what's up over there. Okay. No, not getting anything there either. Okay. Well, I guess we're no chat today, guys. I don't know what happened. Did YouTube shut off? Let me see what's happening. No, it says I'm still live. Still here, still here. Everyone's saying still here. Okay, guys, I, I can no longer read your comments. For some reason, the whole list has disappeared. The, the section doesn't even exist on the website on, on Restream this morning. So we're going to have to go without comments today. Or I'll just read them. Never mind. You know what? I can read them from my phone if needed. Okay, still here, but never leaving. Every day walking with Christ. The chat filler is another reason Elon sucks. <laughs> Elon sucks. <laughs> Blame it on Elon. We got more Moscow time. We're not done. We're not done. So let's move on from the uh, long list of failures of Elon, right? Just what a long list. Um, so this one's good too. This is on Trump. Prosecutors are worried, right? Prosecutors are worried. Jurors might know Donald Trump is guilty, but acquit him anyway. Here's how they could do it, right? That one's a good one. Um, now we have some uh, excellent fake news from... Um, the Economist, right? Excellent. This is this is top quality fake news, top quality Moscow time. All right. Here's what they say. Why Bitcoin is up almost 150% this year, and they're introducing what they call the cockroach theory of crypto. Okay, guys, you want to hear what the cockroach crypto theory of crypto is? Chopping off their heads does not work. Cockroaches can live without one for as long as a week. Whacking them is no guarantee either. Their flexible exoskeletons can bend to accommodate as much as 900 times their body weight. Nor is flushing them down the toilet a solution. Some breeds can hold their breath for more than a half an hour. To most, roaches are an unwelcome pest. Their presence is made all worse because they are indestructible. <laughs> it's talking about us. It's pretty fun, you know? So thank you, economists. We are indeed indestructible. So they get one part of it right. I, I, I would appreciate more of like the honey badger meme, you know, the cockroach thing. I don't know. But look, you know, cockroaches, what they say, will be here no matter what happens, right? No matter what happens, the cockroaches will remain. So it's, it's kind of a compliment. Thanks. I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, now, we've got a couple here on Ukraine that are really good. So Politico says the following. The... <laughs> The Biden administration is quietly, they're quiet, <laughs> quietly shifting its strategy in Ukraine, guys. They're quietly 
shifting their strategy. Now, Ukrainian people might not find it that quiet because they're getting just lit up with missiles, right? Just like lit up. And that's one of the worst things I've seen. Just lit up. This morning, something like 50 missiles have landed on hospitals and bad places, you know, where you don't want missiles to land. Civilian areas and all that stuff, right? So it's, it's quiet, according to Politico. It's just quiet. They're quiet, sh quiet quitting in Ukraine, right? Quiet quitting. Um, for two years, Biden and Zelensky have been focused on driving Russia from Ukraine. Now Washington is dis discussing a move to a more defensive posture. You know, well, tell that to the Ukrainians. They did not have a good morning. They did not have a good uh, December 29th. OK, and this one's awesome, too. This is from the, I think, New York Times, judging by the font. Uh, <laughs> this was a real headline written a couple days ago. All right. Ukraine doesn't need all its territory to defeat Putin. <laughs> they said that out loud. It's okay if we, Crimea, we don't need it all, okay? We don't need the whole thing, all right? Uh, we'll still win, okay? We're still going to win, but, you know, Russia could have a little bit of that territory they want, you know? So there you go. Uh, so now everyone talking about that today, right? The peace plan and uh, David Sachs and Elon Musk and all these guys who have been saying the Ukraine war is pointless and we should stop fighting because it's just a meat grinder. It's just a way to lose life. And we should have signed a peace deal a long time ago. So David Sachs picking up on this, he says, this is exactly right. When Elon floated his peace plan last year, it was denounced as pro-Russian by Zelensky himself and attacked it in the harshest terms by many and was attacked by the uh, in the harshest terms by many in this platform. Now the Biden administration would love to have that deal, right? So Tom Nichols writes, uh, Radio Free Tom on Twitter, you do not need to follow him. You will get brain damage if you do, so steer clear, but I'll follow him for you. He says when Elon, he puts in quotes, right? Remember the Rolling Stone, the list of failures, right? This is one of them, right? The failed peace plan. <laughs> Elon's failed peace plan. So Tom Nichols writes in quotes, when Elon floated his peace plan, uh, Sachs with the intensity of 1,000 Glenn Closes who won't be ignored is determined to prove that a bunch of aging app developers and <laughs> the long list of failures. Elon Musk is an aging app developer. <laughs> could have solved a war started by a genocidal dictator. So they're trying to prove that app developers, aging app developers could have solved a war started by genocidal dictator. Even Putin has to be laughing at it, he says. Even Putin is laughing at it. <laughs> so uh, David Sachs writes, Tom, are you pretending that you got Ukraine right? How much more of a disaster does it need to be before you knock off your pompous know-it-all act? Uh, Mike Ben's always in the DMs, always in the replies, always there telling you what's actually going on. And he writes, Nichols is an aging CIA shill who can't muster a lukewarm take if one was sitting there on fire. And of course, uh, Mike Benz brings the receipts and shows uh, our good man, Tom Nichols' uh, bio, where he was obviously a CIA analyst and researcher for disinformation and other such things, right? Uh, so once again, he is a CIA propagandist and a cloak and dagger type. Um, so there you go, trying to shut down a domestic debate. So um, here's what's going on, right? We've got a peace plan in USA and, you know, a lot of people talking about the peace plan today and what was available, what wasn't available. Um, but remember, the peace plan actually, and, and the context for the war goes back to 2014, right? So if you're going to talk about Ukraine and you're going to talk about Russia and what happened, you've got to go back to 2014. And it was at that point that America engaged in what many people call a color revolution, right? The Victoria Newland led color revolution. Um, I'm not sure if it was an orange one that time, but there's all kinds of different colors they used. And the way the color revolutions work is really simple, right? You get yourself involved in an election period. And then you claim irregularities after the election, and then you make one side the election stealers, and then your preferred side are the Democratic, they're so great, oh, they got robbed of the election, we have to fight for democracy, this is a big fight for democracy. So they tried that back in 2014, right? So Ukraine held an election, the democratic will of the people was to push the country more to the east, right, to more to the Russian side. So the country even 
um, with who lives there and demographically can be thought of as two different places. Now, I don't know anything about Ukrainian nationalism and ethnics and the ethnic thing and all that, right? The language. I don't I barely can tell the difference between Russian and Ukrainian. It's only a slight difference, anyway, as I understand. There is a difference, but it's not huge. I think they can talk to each other. Um so what ended up happening was uh, the the population on the Russian side with the votes they got from because it was you know either side is mixed right at the time in 2014 there was you know a, a majority of one side of the country wanted to be closer to Russia a majority of the other side of the country wanted to be closer to Europe in the end the Russian side had the votes and they won and then the thing happened where they said no it wasn't democracy we need democracy now democracy now and they had a big fight and in the end that was the original time that russia took lands from ukraine the crimea and a few of these eastern places right so this was the beginning of uh, all this kind of talk right <clears throat> so this color revolution um many people say has been um initiated in america a lot of people think january 6 a lot of people think uh, everything we see around the American conversation from the 2020 election was directly from the playbook of what we saw in 2014 and other places. And indeed, it's looking more and more like that, right? You get into the election, you say, that person's not democratic, that, this and that. And now we see with the uh, state of Maine, did you see this yesterday, guys? The state of Maine, okay, the state of Maine in the United States, the one right on the top, right, next two states over from Vermont, a place I go all the time. The Secretary of State in Maine has banned Donald Trump from being on the ballot, right? So one of these, you know, oh, they 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 were in they're insurrectionists. That's the 14th Amendment thing that they tried in Colorado last week. But let me just <laughs> I gotta read, I gotta read. I have to do it. Okay. The this is the Attorney General, and I'm gonna do it at my impression of the Attorney General of Maine. Okay. My impression. Now you've got to think, I don't always get moronic up talk correctly. Okay, it's not always easy for me to do moronic uptalk. If you don't know what moronic uptalk is, I'll do my best to show you what it is here. Okay, so she actually gave an interview explaining kicking Trump off the ballot yesterday, and she uses moronic uptalk through the whole thing. So this is her. I I'm going to try to do my best. Again, I'm so mindful, and I said this in my decision. I said this in my decision. Okay. It is unprecedented. No secretary of state has ever deprived a presidential candidate. In my decision, the presidential candidate. <laughs> so she goes on and sounds like the lowest IQ person in the history of the Republic. Talking about democracy and insurrections. <laughs> so when you see someone so dumb, so rock bottom stupid, talking about democracy, you're involved in a color revolution. That's what's happening, right? When you hear someone like the Secretary of State of Maine using moronic uptalk to say that she knows who can be on the ballot in the United States, just like Tom Nichols said, right? He said Putin is laughing at um, uh, people saying we want peace in America. Well, I don't think that's what Putin's really laughing at. <laughs> I think Putin's having a laugh at the moronic uptalk of the Secretary of State of Maine. Talking like that is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life and is a perfect, perfect, perfect person to be leading this effort. That she's the first person to ban Trump couldn't be better. I mean, it's just perfect, right? The one in, the one in Colorado had a little more feistiness, spoke kind of like an educated human and, and like someone who probably didn't believe what they said, but was at least capable of arguing it. This one here, I think, believes it, but it's mostly because the IQ is too low to understand what's going on. So the moronic up talk, we're, we're on to something with this. This is perfect for us, right? We love this moronic up talk. If the leading proponents of the fiat industrial complex use moronic up talk, we're going to win for sure, for sure, like, like today, right? So it gets better, though. It gets better. <laughs> it turns out, uh, oh, yeah, you got to see, you got to see all of our pictures, too. She's, she, <laughs> you gotta see her, right? She's got like a, a, a defend democracy t-shirts on and, and she, she goes running and she wears a mask when she's running. <laughs> it's all these mask pictures of her running. It's pretty good stuff. Um, now, it turns out there was another 
color revolution that was initiated and is starting to proceed where in the country of Serbia. So it turns out, and I didn't know anything about this, but Mike Ben Cyber has been educating people, uh, sharing with folks the 2002 film Bringing Down a Dictator about how the U.S. State Department CIA NGO blob swarm orchestrated a color revolution inside Serbia to regime change Slobodan Milosevic. So I remember being, you know, in my early 20s when all this stuff was going on and saying, whoa, Slobodan, he's Hitler, right? I remember parroting the brainwashing talking points and the hallucinatory uh, things that the CIA was inducing in people back then, and I thought the same, right? So they made this movie, and, and you know, apparently it's really low quality now, especially in retrospect. It's 20-something years old, um, and most people know it's a scam and, and ridiculous, right? But this thing was released. Um, but the better news about it all, uh, and Mike Ben's commenting as well, want to understand this week's U.S. orchestrated color revolution to overthrow the government of Serbia? Watch this U.S. orchestrated color revolution uh, <clears throat> um, uh, video to overthrow the government of Serbia. So what we found out is that, um, and luckily, right, so this is happening. I don't know the exact details of what's happening in Serbia, to be honest. I just know this is going on and it's caused some uh, consternation. Now, I do remember warning everyone right here on the breakup sometime in September, October, when I started following Mike Benz, he actually predicted that Serbia was on the democracy fortification list, like Hungary, right? So Hungary and Serbia both are going to get their democracies enhanced and upgraded by America. So um, that's what it sounds like anyway. So another thing Putin's probably laughing at, right? <laughs> I think a lot of people are laughing at. I don't know if people in Serbia are laughing so much. And it turns out that luckily we know the heir to the actual crown of Serbia. So the crown no longer really exists, but the hereditary rights and all that stuff uh, are still followed and tracked. And so Prince Philip is a Bitcoiner. He works for January 3rd. He's part of the nation state orange pilling efforts. I got to spend some time with Prince Philip in Amsterdam this year. Um, and he's a super cool guy. I've met him a few times. Uh, love the guy. So as this was going on, right, he's got to be very careful about what he does, but he did write a long Twitter post. And in it, you start to see an opportunity for him and for Bitcoin. So as this color revolution is going on, he's actually there. He married a Serbian. He's repatriated to that country. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, but he released a beautiful family portrait um, of him and his wife and his kids at the house in, uh, I'm not sure where they live, but somewhere in Serbia, maybe Sarajevo or I'm not sure where. Um, anyway, here's the rights. In light of recent events and social unrest, I wish to share my perspective, not as a critic, but as an advocate for a governance model that I truly believe in, monarchy. As someone who embraces this ideal, the concept of a republic to me appears inefficient. I refrain from endorsing any political faction. My civic participation, such as voting, is merely to inspire our citizens to exercise their rights. My ballot is personal, potentially even blank, symbolizing my stance that the real answer lies not within party lines, but within... Uh, the structure of our governance itself. Why monarchy? The reasoning is multifaceted. Long-term planning, property rights, lower time preference, stability and continuity, reduced rent-seeking, protection against majority tyranny, election cycle-driven short-termism, incentive for personal gain, policy inconsistency, impact of special interests. This is a list of all the things that, that he would change, right? Absolute accountability. Um, and so finally, he says, as a supporter of hard money principles, I am committed to the economic stability and freedom of Serbia. My dedication extends beyond current politics. It is about fostering a deep, lasting connection to our homeland for my children and their progeny. My work and my legacy are there for long-term prosperity and the liberty of our nation. So you're going to start to see a lot more of this kind of stuff, right? People who cannot be um, co-opted by these forces who can't be put under the fiat spell, who will continue to be part of the chorus laughing at the usurpers, right? So you can see this, uh, and 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 Turdemister um, <clears throat> made a point on this too. He says, I personally don't have much clarity on whether a Republican, Democratic, or monarchist political model is generally preferable, but I think we're approaching an epoch where these discussions will be of great importance once again. Um, and uh, and so he's out there talking about how this conversation will start to become more and more important. And I do think that's true. Um, so 
you know, and if you if you go back to even think about what happened with Trump and what's going on in Maine, you know, the idea that a lot of these people think that Trump involved himself in an insurrection. Here's Michael Schellenberger talking about it, right? We must prevent people from voting for Trump because he attempted insurrection, the media say, but he didn't. January 6th was a riot from failed security, not a coup attempt. Claims that we must save democracy by destroying it stem from mass psychosis after years of brainwashing. Uh, and that's what it looks like, right? That's what it looks like. You've got Vivek, Vivek saying the same thing. If you'd have told me nearly three years ago when I was just a CEO that January 6th was an inside job, I would have said that's crazy talk. It's not. There is now clear evidence that there was at the very least entrapment of peaceful protesters similar to the fake Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping plot and countless other cases. The FBI won't admit how many undercover police officers were in the field on January 6th. Capitol Police, on one hand, fired rubber bullets and explosives into a peaceful crowd who they then willingly later allowed to enter the Capitol. That doesn't add up, and the actual evidence turned to the prior narrative upside down. If the deep state is willing to manufacture an insurrection to take down its political opponents, they can do anything. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. So he's been reiterating this a lot. Right, the same almost tweet. I've read something very similar from Vivek recently, uh, just a few weeks ago. But this is a fresh one from yesterday, and he's repeating it again, which is a very good technique to repeat, 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 repeat. Right, especially that once you see it, you can't unsee it line. Right, that that is excellent. Right, <clears throat> so you've got him doing that, and 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 more and more people picking up on what's going on about the ballot uh, um, scamming and and all of that stuff. Right. Um, now, you know, people will say, oh, we've got, uh, you know, the Supreme Court that's going to overturn this and there's no way Trump's not going to do that. And I'm not, I am indeed not worried about it. They can even do right in. Again, I think this all helps Trump, right? The more and more things against him, like Maine, uh, the better it's going to be. He can win in a mail, mail in, write in ballot, all that kind of stuff. Um, but the thing that gives more reflection and the thing that makes it more relevant to us and, and why I think. Um, we're not going to be able to to go back to the way things were or why we're at actually the beachhead of systemic widespread change this year in 2024, right? We're, we're almost done 2023. So when we get to 2024, it's going to happen quickly. And I get this from James Fishback. And here's something he said, right? So just remember what's actually happening to the Democrat Party right now, right? The amount of... Um, um, checks they're cashing in, the amount of disdain and lack of uh, trust they'll ever be able to cultivate again in with many Americans, right? The FBI, their institutions and all these things. But just look at the justice system for a second. Look at all the systems that we can tell are absolutely rotten. Education, look at Harvard. The media, scam. The justice system, the courts, scam. The Senate, Congress, scam, right? The elections, scam. So understanding all of this and seeing all of these scams in real time um, <clears throat> means we're no matter what entering into another epoch. And James Fishback says it, I think, really well, saying Vivek Ramaswamy has been right on. And now we're talking about the Federal Reserve, right? You can apply to the federal government doing all these things, which is what I've been saying for a long time, right? All of this is about federal government power, federal government size, federal, federal government scale. You know, even this stupid thing you heard this weekend about Nikki Haley and uh, civil war and what was it for and the slavery thing and now all these conservatives, it was definitely, I, I'm not a Nikki Haley fan, okay? I, I don't want to defend Nikki Haley. I do love Trump's nickname for her, bird brain, you know, bird brain, that's, she's a bird brain. I don't want her anywhere near power. But her answer to the thing about the civil war really wasn't that bad. Right, it really wasn't. Now I get the person said, and da, da da da, and now you get all these conservatives, right, just prostrating themselves about democracy and we fought for it and all these things, right. So now you got to listen to all this shit, right. But truthfully, it was the way to still understand the Civil War is to look at money. It's still the way to understand it, right? To understand what was going on with, and Nikki Haley was kind of right. How we're going to govern ourselves was what the thing was about. What was the, what was what the Civil War was about? Which type of government? Which form of government? How it will fund itself? How it will fund the war effort? Right? You know, Abraham Lincoln was a great innovator in war finance, an amazing innovator in war finance. Let's not forget that, right? 
So Abraham Lincoln um, and everything he did back then, now I, I'm, I don't know all of it, right? I've read the Doris Kearns Goodwin book uh, about him called Team of Rivals, which I loved. Uh, I've seen the Ken Burns documentary, however many hours, you know, 20 hour documentary on the Civil War. I've read Shelby Foote's uh, epic, epic sort of tomb on uh, the Civil War. So, I, you know, I know I know a little bit about it, right? I'm not an expert, not an expert. So don't come to me for Civil War trivia or anything like that. Um, but I understand what happened, right? I, I knew a lot of the players and the Supreme Court and the election stuff and uh, even uh, Abraham Lincoln's nickname, the original gorilla, right? That he was given by uh, whoever he ran against in the second time he went out, the the failed general of the army uh, before he was replaced by U.S. Grant. I can't remember his name right now. Anyway, um, what we're starting to understand is these the, the entire federal apparatus. Now, what Abraham Lincoln started uh, was suppressed after he became president, right? Or after he was assassinated. There was no more appetite to have a powerful president after him because of what he did in the job, right? A lot of people were very scandalized by the amount of power Lincoln took. Now, other people understood protection. It's the same old argument. He needs it. He's got to fight for this. He's got to fight for that. So the power was given to him. And I'm not asking anyone to even reconsider what happened or it was a big mistake or whatever. It just started a chain of events that meant that by the time we get to World War I, the appetite to do what he did was back. And the blueprint that he gave was there, right, of how to finance the war. And that's where we start getting, you know, the, the social security system starts with Lincoln, right? The the beginning of that, the, the beginning of um, uh, a number by which you would pay money or uh, uh, declare the money you made to the government to pay taxes. And in the case of the Civil War, to fund the war. But this whole thing returned for World War One, right? Which was really about financing regime changes for kings like we just mentioned, right? The Serb was never after World War One out by a new and better finance model for war. World War One ought to be reinterpreted by everyone as a war between political systems and their capacity to finance war. Gold-backed nations couldn't afford the fight. I'm back. Okay, good. Um, but here's what uh, we learn from this fella, right? <clears throat> from James Fishback. Vivek Ramaswamy has been right on uh, on the Fed from the beginning. They've tried to play God with their economy, and now they're trying their hand at politics. Here's the truth. The staff of the Federal Reserve are overwhelmingly Democrats. For every one Republican economist at the Fed, there are 10 Democrat economists. In 2020, Fed staff donated $900,000 to Democrat candidates' causes and just over 30000 to Republican ones a 30 to one ratio. In 2019, William Dudley, after retiring as president of the New York Fed, argued the 2020 election itself falls within the Fed's purview because Trump's re-election arguably presents a threat to the US and global economy. Imagine that a chairman, a president of the New York Fed, the most powerful node in their scam network, right? The New York Fed, much more powerful. That's where the gold is held, or it was at one point anyway. Um, they're a much more active participant in the federal system than other places. You know, there are like sort of jobs they all do, like the St. Louis Fed is like the data center and blah, 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 right? So um, this is what he says. The Fed is undeniably political. Americans are understandably furious with Bidenomics and desperate for lower mortgage credit card and auto rates, something the Fed can deliver with rate cuts. Fed rate cuts would provide short-term economic stimulus that would boost Biden electorally, the incumbent president lives slash dies by how Americans feel about the economy. Rate cuts wouldn't just boost Biden in 2024. They'd risk reigniting crippling inflation that would hurt all Americans. Dear Fed, focus on the economy and stay the heck out of the 2024 election. But of course, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> They're here to party, right? They're definitely here to party. They're here to save democracy like the moronic up talk secretary of state of Maine. It's the same person. They're all the same person a bunch of NPCs. Now, um, the good news is the rest of the world has said pound cement, you fucking losers, right? We see that the, uh, this is from the Wall Street Journal yesterday, the dominant dollar faces a backlash in the oil market, 
20%, an estimated 20% of global oil this year was bought and sold in other currencies as Russia and Iran sold cargoes to China and other buyers. We're seeing it more, right? And Luke Roman says 20% uh, is a surprisingly high percentage, right? He says de-dollarization via global commodity markets is clearly occurring and it is paradoxically being accelerated by US sanctions. Um, we also get uh, Prof. Sainoj saying the following, how Congress and the Fed broke housing this is modern day serfdom orchestrated over decades by America's ruling elites, starting with vote buying that wiped out the poor, then vote buying that wiped out the banks. And now after flooding eight trillion to bribe voters into lockdowns, they're coming for the rest of us. So that's from Prof. St. Owens, who we trust for his research and points of view and think he's honest, at least. Uh, I don't think he's always right, but I love the guy for, you know, doing his best. Uh, now it turns out that Russia and China have completely stopped using the U.S. dollar in trade. Of course they have, right? And now at the same time, you've got you've got all these people going on about uh, the elections again, right? Trump. Guess who's around? Remember Paul? Str no, Peter Strzok. Remember that guy? He was the one with the insurance plan with the girl, and they worked in the FBI, and he did all that stuff, and he had the really smug face, right? This is what he says. Whatever we see coming out of SCOTUS, there is going to be, they can't unwrite the 14th Amendment. There's going to have to be some provision that if somebody engages in insurrection, that they that that does potentially disqualify them from the presidency, right? And so Mike Ben says, Mr. Insurance Policy is back to sell you another insurance policy. And that was the guy who did it, right? Um, so it looks like the Saudis uh, also uh, interested in settling uh, outside of the US dollar for things like this right? For things like this. So we'll see what happens. Things are changing quick, right? But it looks like we're winning. Now I'm going to try and find the comments and see what's happening. Um, let's see. All right. Ukraine is quiet winning, Jose says. They did. Uh, I recognize the sovereignty of the DPR and LPR. Yeah. Um, those are the uh, don't ask uh, and in the other place, I guess, right? Lukinx. So I, I don't know any of the regions in Ukraine, guys. Again, I, I'm not a not a Ukraine Russia expert, right? Um, Wisteria says you were right about Colorado. Of course, of course. None of these things are real, right? Uh, this one in a main evidently lost horribly and didn't win in any county. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Banning Trump straight out of band camp. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Robert, moronic maniac. I love it. Um, Wisteria, I hope she doesn't get bacterial remote pneumonia wearing a little GMO cotton mask. So funny. Very cool. Uh, Robert Schmidt, I have been planning on going to Belgrade to get some dental work. Good idea, Rob. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, good idea. Give those guys some business. Uh, good morning, Meku. Um, Veterans Cannabis Advocacy Group says Bitcoin is a gift from above. Absolute scarcity is its gift wrappings. We love it. Tom Berry, pass on monarchy. Yeah, you don't look. I'm not saying you have to like monarchy. Um, you know, Americans definitely like uh, what they got going on with their system and their revolution. So all I'm saying is they've, um, um, you know, the worst part about monarchy is the belief in the divine right. Yeah, yeah. Look. Not making a case. I, I think it's, I think it's, well, I'm making a case. What I'm saying is it's a debate worth having, right? And that we're talking about these things is important because whatever we have in America, you can't just call it democracy anymore. Like Bukele said, it's not that. It's it's some plutocracy, something else, right? And it's got to change. Nature abhors a vacuum, and whatever we've created here is destroying the world. Like we, America now poses an existential threat to the planet, to civilization. <laughs> now they can just as easily fix it. You remember, you're not going to find a more pro-America, I love America person than me. I'm, I'm through and through love the place. But the way it is organized, which is organic and up for change, um is has fallen into a, a stance that's that that can ruin the world we can actually ruin the world with how fucked up america is now and so um you know i'm against washington dc and i still you know hear people saying civil war civil war all day 
America is never having a civil war for the simple reason. Well, I mean, if they do arrest Trump, you're gonna there's gonna be a skirmish somewhere, right? But is that a civil war? I don't know. America doesn't need one. The beautiful thing about America is the Federation itself and the actual way in which states are able to exercise sovereignty, which they've forgotten. It's become a vestigial organ. They don't know how to do it. They will remember. Texas is remembering quickly, and all of these places have to remember. And so as they remember, you know, the, people can keep criticizing DeSantis. He's an idiot in a million ways. He's one of the most boring presidential candidates, one of the worst presidential candidates I've seen. But as a governor, he understands his power and the sovereignty of Florida. And you've absolutely got to give him credit for that because that's the way things are headed. Democrat state people don't really get that yet. This girl Bellows is working for Biden in the state of Maine, <laughs> right? This is a federal thing. So it's 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 changing, and while I do prefer the American system, I can see why. I can see why monarchy works, right? And I wouldn't hate it, right? Um, the emperor of Japan is a perfect example of how this could work. Now, you think Japan would have trouble with this kind of shit? Well, they did, you know, Abe was killed, so they have trouble. <laughs> they got trouble in Japan, right? Uh, but at least the emperor could, if needed, change things quickly. Um, and he ought to. Uh, Robert Schmidt, RFK is still number one. Vivek, number two. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to feel like uh, Vivek is my number one. Um, but I love RFK. I love RFK. Uh, I've just been getting so much um, um, enjoyment out of Vivek's approach lately. And look, he's saying things that are uh, way, way, way more out there than anyone else in the sense that he's taking more risks with his subject matter and he's doing it very well because he does it. You know, the thing about Trump is Trump speaks like his base. You know what I mean? Like when Trump tries to jump in on an issue, he speaks just like the people who love him. And it's it's the most persuasive way. It's very effective, but the the words he chooses causes mental illness in like half the population. It it enrages them. It enrages half the population. Whereas Vivek does the same. He can tackle the same subjects, but his capacity to explain it to high educated left wing people, uh, high you know well educated liberals is a lot higher. So his persuasion for the people that Trump gives mental illness to is a lot higher. And in a certain sense, that's who we've got to deal with, right? We're, we're sort of dealing with the high IQ, stupid liberals out there that don't understand they've been hypnotized. They think they're too smart to be hypnotized. <laughs> that's what they believe, right? They're, these are the people that will tell you uh, they, they believe in logic right? And that's why they don't believe in God. Like, like th th there's a limit to their IQ, right? They're not that smart. So they're they're in the middling IQ range and will say dumb, dumb stuff that isn't logical, but they think they're logical enough, so logical that they couldn't be hypnotized. A little, a little um, uh, secret hypnotists don't tell you, right? Want to know what hypnotists know? I learned from Scott Adams and other hypnotists. Uh, hypnotists know that doctors are the easiest. They are. And that's what they know, right? Because because of this, they think it doesn't apply to them. They think their uh, success at school translates to everything in the world. It, does, it doesn't, right? Uh, so that's one of the big uh, differences. So there you go. There you go. Um, uh, yeah, Don, uh, Donetsk, Lugansk. Uh, yeah, I can't say all those. Luhansk. Yeah, something like that. I think the future of governance is a network of small countries, city states, and private communities. Yeah, but that's but that that's what America is, right, Jose? That's that is supposed to be what American federalism is. These small states, um, small countries, is what it was founded as. My little country of Vermont, my little state of Vermont. We don't have a million people in my state. You know that. There's not a million, not e like barely half, six hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand, maybe, in the whole state. That's it. Right. So it's very small. Um, Wyoming, very similar. Right. There's a lot of sub million person states. They're countries. They have secretaries of state themselves. Right. All these things. So there you go. 
Um, uh, surveillance just on everyone's phones is, oh, have you heard about this too? The amount of uh, surveillance on the phones. This is something that I found out the other day that um, Apple and Android have now the way it works is the notifications we've talked about it before remember all these ping notifications we've been getting emergency network system da, 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 those things those blasts that have come out apparently uh and we found this out for i don't know if it's a freedom of information thing but it happened just before the holidays but no one's even talking about it the trick they're using is they're not actually tracking everyone's phone themselves. They track the cloud data where the notifications are pushed from. So push notification settings and all that go to a cloud. And they've gotten Android and Apple, 99% of the phones. Um, all that information is going right into the spy tech now. So they can actually geolocate everyone using this push notification uh, architecture. Because it's not a person they're requesting the information from it's the server and i guess they can do that and it's enough so uh they literally now i mean don't remember there is no private messaging system in the world none of it works none ne assume assume 100 percent of your messages can be read will be read if needed the only way to hide them is make them boring where did you go to dinner last night that's it. There's no other way, right? Boringness is literally the only way to, to have freedom of speech without getting spied on uncensored. That's it. <laughs> Boring. Keep it low energy and then you can make it, right? Um, and speak in code. Uh, otherwise, intercept it, right? So uh, Daniel asks, have you read Gore Vidal's Lincoln, Nolan? I have. I have, Daniel. Thank you. Yes, that was uh, gifted to me. I went through a major Lincoln... Um, you know, study period in college and, and someone gave me that book and I loved it. Um, Robert Schmidt, Russell Brand for King. He'd be better than the one they have. He sucks. Hate that King. Uh, his narratives of empire series is great. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Begins with Burr and ends with empire. Daniel says, I didn't read those other ones. Oh, I only read the Gore Vidal Lincoln one. Um, but I like it. Jose, the midwits, indeed. Um, Daniel says, Viv Vivek is so smart, he's abandoned TV ads. Didn't you see that? And the fake news tried to say, oh, he had no matter. <laughs> I wish I could have found one. I didn't see those again this morning. But there was some fake news article that tried to make it sound like he was like on the run and losing, so he couldn't afford the TV ads anymore. And they just totally ignored his comments about it being a scam and a waste of his money and time. Um uh, Wisteria says, I love Vivek's stance on eradicating a lot of the three letter agencies. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what he's doing. Uh, it's blowing everyone's mind. Indeed. What about Noster? Uh, well, Noster is in the same boat. Look, I'm not saying they even have um, uh, backdoor access or anything like that. I don't know the security vulnerabilities of, of, of Noster, but my assumption is they have one. Right, you're you're better off assuming without proof. You, you you don't have to wait for the proof to come in, right? Assume signal is compromised. Assume it. There's no reason to assume it's not, right? The none, 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 none. So assume it's gone. Uh, Wisteria, maybe a landline. Hmm. Uh, PH says our system here in Thailand is a democracy with the monarchy as the head of state. I was skeptical for a long a long time, but now I think it's a great system. Serving as the ultimate failsafe. Yeah, your king is cool too. He's got doesn't he keep his like uh, concubine around all the time? Hey, why not? You know, I'm not gonna judge. Um, I think they got in a fight or something. His concubine and his wife. But look, he he got involved in all the trouble, and they tried to kick him out. I think right, but it didn't work out. All right, I'm gonna look at the rumble quotes, and uh, then I've got some stuff to do today. But glad to be back, everyone. Glad to be back. Sorry about the past couple of days. The house was not possible. Now we've got more people. Uh, it's just my kids. We're getting ready to beat it. All right. Here now. We live. Um, Zim KD says, my understanding could be wrong. Russia recognized areas of Ukraine as being sovereign indeed. Therefore entered into those areas to protect them indeed. Those areas may not want the government of Russia 
uh, yeah, that that's more or less what I understand to help while attempting to be sovereign. I mean, I think there's enough backdoor deals going on between uh, Donetsk and all these private areas. So um, I think they definitely believe that there are some form of Russia, but there you go. Um, Scott says, what about the global network they injected into everyone? Uh, that seems like the most pressing issue to me, uh, which it seems to have manifested at least the concept in Israel. Yeah, that's, that's what's happening. Uh, the left's definition of democracy does not include us in their minds. Our votes are invalidated. Probably. Yeah. Don't want civil war. Investigate tactical civics.com. I'll check that out. Yeah. Um, I triple E ITU are where we need to be looking. Uh, they're tracking people from their bodies. That's what the vax was for. Well, uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know anything about all that stuff. Vaccinate people emit and receive signal, the cyber physical backbone of the bio digital convergence. That would be scary. Don't want to hear about that kind of stuff. Um, but I do want to say, oh, I forgot one story that I am going to talk about today. This is another thing I saw, and it has to do with uh, Tucker. So Tucker, by the way, had uh, Derek Chauvin's lawyer on today, but that's not the episode I want to talk about. I want to talk about the one he did just before, uh, just before Christmas. All right, and that was with Kevin Spacey in character as president from uh, whatever that show was. Um, now let me just tell you, what was the show called again? Uh, you know, the um, house of cards, right? Where he becomes the president. Uh, now let me tell you as someone who worked in parliament in Canada, I still find the show veep, you know, the one with Elaine Bennis, uh, from Seinfeld where she plays the vice president. I still find that one, the most accurate political show ever made. So whenever people ask me, you worked in, you know, executive, legislative politics and all that stuff. Um, you know, was how is the house of cards real? And I say, it's the opposite. <laughs> I can't watch it because it's so fake. Um, you know, I, house of house of cards compared to veep is complete fake fakeness, right? The real show that I saw in veep was more accurate, right? For staffers and all these people. Now that's not the end of the story right? There are definitely psychopaths like um, Kevin Spacey's character involved in politics. You just don't see them around in everyday stuff. So he ends up doing an interview in character with Tucker Carlson just before Christmas, because I guess this Kevin Spacey character does an interview every year. Now, I don't know the backstory here. Kevin Spacey, super shady character, it seems like, uh, but he's got enemies. And here is a great uh, observation by someone called the disgraced propagandist. Right? I love that name, disgraced. You know, who who doesn't want to be disgraced in 2023? If you're not on the disgraced side in 2023, you're you're not doing it right. So here's what he says, and and I agree 100 with what he says. But let's see if you do. So he says, my interpretation seems to me. Hold on, no, Livy out. One second. All right. So, um, kids fighting, you know. Uh, so, here's what he says. My interpretation. Seems to me like Tucker's primary audience is not the right, not the public, but the regime and the specific elites who smited him. Everything he does seems like a 4D chess FU to them. This group is terrified by Kevin Spacey for the same reason they were terrified of Epstein. He was involved in very dark sex stuff with very elite people and knows way too much. They tried to get rid of him, but weren't completely able to. Spacey's strange video from a few years ago, also in character as Frank Underwood, seemed to threaten the regime with naming names. In this instance, I think a few things are happening. Tucker is threatening the regime by collaborating with Spacey. Spacey is more or less revealing that the regime literally tried to kill him. And the pair is suggesting that they're ready to fight back by any means necessary. When Spacey says we need a leader who isn't afraid to push a journalist in the right direction, uh, I think it's a subtle reference to when Frank Underwood pushed the Kate Mara journalist's character in front of the train in House of Cards. 
I don't think this has anything to do with Spacey or Tucker or actually running. It's meant to be a bizarre, ominous threat towards a regime that uses bizarre, ominous threats of its own. Basically, they're saying you tried to destroy us and you haven't and we haven't forgotten. Merry Christmas. See you soon. Um, I think that sounds more or less accurate to me. I do think that sounds like the audience that he's after and is looking at. And, um, you know, checks out. It checks out. All right. Let me get the. Uh, um, mm hmm. Where am I? There you go. I'll look it up, Scott. I will indeed. Again, I'm not a scientist, so I don't... Uh, I tend not to follow too much of the vaccine stuff, you know? And the vaccine shit's boring. Boring, boring, boring. Hate even talking about it. All right, what does the live chat say? Um, maybe a landline. I don't know it's right here. Um, all right, Wild Hustle. Hope everyone has a great New Year's. The 2024 God Candle is going to be epic. Stack wisely freaks. Uh, Mom, I'm cleaning my room, Robert Schmidt says. <laughs> kids will be kids, Wisteria. Yep, yep. Um, hope days off for glorious. Happy New Year. Yeah, the kids were just fighting a little. That's fine. We'll be okay. All right, everyone. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the last episode. Um, and then I'll catch you again in the new year when I get the new studio set up. Shouldn't be long, though. It shouldn't be long. Uh, I got all the parts, I think, this year. Uh, last year, I had to wait on someone delivering my computer to me because I had it in storage. I don't have to do that this year. So we're going to be good. All right. Peace.